Okay, I think we'll get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenna Hamid. I'm the programs manager at Center for Book Arts. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening for a discussion with the 2019 Workspace Residents. The Workspace Residency is dedicated to artists who have little to no background in the book arts, and they're granted a year's access to CBA's print shop and bookbinding studios, as well as a tuition waiver and stipends to support the production of new work. The residency provides a grounding for their book arts practice with the goal of expanding CBA's community to include artists of intersectional creative practices. Tonight, the 2019 Workspace residents, Delphine Fawandu, Jiyun Hong, Kathleen Ma, Laura Nova, and Kevin Umanya will share works created during or inspired by their residency at Center for Book Arts. And they'll take part in a Q&A session following the presentations. I encourage everyone to visit the exhibitions by reserving a spot on centerforbookarts.org slash exhibitions. Feel free to use the chat to share responses and questions you'd like answered by the artists. Toward the end, we'll allow audience to unmute and ask a question as well. Closed captioning is available throughout the presentation. You can access that by going to the bottom of your Zoom screen. Support for programs like these is provided in part by New York State Council on the Arts with support of Andrew Cuomo in the New York State Legislature and by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with City Council. So now I will introduce our first speaker of the evening, Delphine Fawandu. Myself. Good evening and thank everyone for um, coming out and joining us tonight. I'm going to share um, some of my works that were inspired by and made during my residency at the Center for Book Arts. I will start by saying that I applied for the residency because I wanted to incorporate bookmaking into my practice. And I had absolutely no experience hand making books, but I knew that because I love to work with materials such as fabric and hair and did a lot of stitching that the idea of constructing books by hand would be really interesting for my practice. So um, this book here, it's called Sun Sum in Spirit. I mean, Sun Sum, Sun Sun in Mind, and it comes from a series Sun Sun in Mind, Body, and Spirit. And Sun Sum means actual spirit in the um, Akan language in Ghana. I was invited to do an exhibition at the um, Braunschweig, Konstruving Braunschweig in Germany. And that's where this project that actually started at a class, um, Clarissa Sai gave a, a very amazing bookmaking class that was almost an intuitive pro um, process where at the end you end up with a book that you didn't even know what it was going to come, you didn't know what the outcome was going to be. And using that method is how I made this book here. So now the book is in Berlin. So it's so interesting how it already, you know, it made its way out into the world already. So... I'll share some pages with you. With this, I was thinking about journeys um, across the Atlantic Ocean, but also thinking about um, some move, movement, spiritual movement, um, historical movement, trans histories, and um, yeah. That's just a sampling of the book. And then um, here's another book that I started at the Center for Book Arts. I made um, a small mock-up of it and I wasn't really sure you know, what I was doing. I was just really um, juxtapositioning photos together. Um, the, and it was de definitely a, a um, conversation around the Atlantic Ocean, which shows up in my work often. And then I had a curator come and visit me and she was just like, oh my goodness, this has to be in a show that I'm doing. So now it's at the California African American Museum. It's a part of a show called Enunciated Life. And this book is juxtaposed against a video. The series is called She Caught the Holy Ghost and it looked like this. And it's two hymns, him hymn one and him two. And this book represents him one. And if we turn the pages, it's also about movement, like the same kind of themes that I'm thinking about. And the interesting thing is that the way that the book is made, it all, you also get the feel of, of video and movement. And, you know, so it's interesting to have it juxtapositioned against a video. 
Um, I took, I mean, I want to say, you know, Ronnie is one of is the person, Ronnie Gross, who's probably with, the, who's in here with us this evening. She's one of the, um, the instructors who really um, gave me a foundational view of how to construct a book. Also, we did letterpress um, printing. This was actually a proposal for the letterpress, but it never made it because right when I was going to do it, the pandemic happened. But however, I was still able to um, to show some of this work in um, Camera Austria. I showed the proposal for Camera Austria and it's, it, it was published, but it, what the text, I really wanted to do the text and letterpress. Like I have the pages and everything. And it was really just the idea of juxtaposing images and found text together to, um, to see how they would relate with each other. So I have a series of seven of these that um that i'm you know i'm still hoping to leather press them one day and here is my installation meet me at another world which is on view at cba which again is about this um this movement journey and and i'll show you this i'm really excited about this i made a zine and i'm going to play it this is the last thing that i'll show and um the zine is called hala I was also inspired by the Center for Book Arts for this one. I took a zine making workshop. And with this um, zine, it's a collaboration between myself and an artist named Orly Malka. And so this is issue number one. And the idea is that I collaborate with an artist. We do an interview and then we share works. We juxtaposition our works against each other. And that's the zine. So each, I'll probably do at least two a year. And this is the inaugural um, issue. I did an edition of 100 copies and where I'll say um, for 60%, 60% sold. So it's doing really well. And um, it lives at the um, Victoria and Albert Museum and many other different people are buying it up. So it's really cool and a wonderful way to collaborate. And I'll end on that, that um, the Center for Book Arts really inspired me to collaborate. I feel like bookmaking is a way it leads to collaboration. Um, I've made lifelong friends who I hope to collaborate with my peers, you know, fellow residents. And so, yeah, it's a wonderful space. And I feel like it's a home space where I could always, you know, call and get some tips and all types of stuff. So I'm really grateful for the experience. So I will pass on to, did I stop sharing? Yes, I'll pass on to Jayun. Hello? Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will share my screen. Mm. Does it work? Okay. Um, just gonna do full screen. Good. Okay. Hi. Uh, hi. My name is Jian Hong, um, and I'm one of the 2019 Workspace residents. Um, so when I started my residency at Center for Book Arts, I uh, I fell in love with letterpress. I just love the process. I I just enjoyed setting types and everything. And I really enjoyed making what I call letterpress drawings that you can make with a wonder foam, which is a thin foam with a sticky background that I learned from Ronnie, Gro Ronnie Gross. So this is how you make it. And I just made a lot of uh, fun posters and it's very easy a uh, fun way of making drawings on letterpress. So here's like the cook, cookbook that I was working on. And this is a paper sculpture that I could make with the drawings that I made on the letterpress. Oops. And, uh, and I made uh, two broad sides with the images that I could make on the letterpress. This is for Simone White and uh, handset types. So you could see that it was very, it was very challenging for me because at that time I was, I think I was a beginner. So it's challenging, but really, really satisfying. Here's the image uh, of 
uh, image that I made with the wonder foam method. And here's another broad side that was for Yanni. Now, luckily, the two poems were about dreams, that which is a subject that I really, really love. So this one is a, oh, sorry. Deconstructed image of a face. And here's the image that's just layers of ovals. But uh, this one I made with polymer plate, which is very, very effective and very easy way to print on a letterpress. So enjoy different uh, methods of making broadside. And uh, I also took a lot of classes there. Uh, embroidered class, one page book class, paper cutting class, and a photo book as an experimental object. And the two classes I loved the most was the world of box with Barbara and um, atypical binding with Ben Denzer. So this is a box that I made um, at the box making class. It's a, it's a box, but it works like a little stage that you can open the door here. I just loved going to uh, classes at Center for Book Arts and it's just privilege to take all these classes for a year. This is another box that I made. And, and yeah, here are the boxes that I made uh, in the five days, I think. The classes was for five days. So it was really fun. I would definitely take it uh, again next time. And this is an image of a book that I made at uh, with Ben Denzer, a typical binding class that oh, we were supposed to bring, you know, anything that we want to bind together. So I grabbed a lot of random objects from my living room. Here's a lot of uh, just like digital prints, glove and a plant and an empty box of cup noodles. So it was really fun. It was two day class, I think. It was really fun making it. And this is my pop-up book called Miscellanea that's on view at Center for Book Arts right now. Uh, this is why I applied to workspace residency. That I, I normally I make paper sculptures with digital prints. And I thought pop-up book is a smaller, smaller form form of my work. Um, so here is the spread. It contains five spreads of still life, still lives. It's another page. I wanted to make a pop up book that uh, visually excites you, that makes you stare at it pleasantly for a long time. And during pandemic, I really had to focus on the little things in my living room because I was literally stuck in my living room, just had to find a joy of looking at things, like especially little things. And I was always uh, loved still life paintings. So I just had wanted to make a pop-up book that's like a still life painting. It's my this book is my love for still lives. So, yeah. And yeah, I had really, really productive year at Center for Book Arts and thank you everyone who helped us and taught us and really, really appreciate that I got that chance to do it at the Center for Book Arts. And I met, met a lot of uh, great artists there. Very thankful. <laughs> So uh, that's it for me. So I'll pass it on to Kathleen. Great. Hey, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone see this okay? Okay. 
Um, so hey everyone, my name is Kathleen Ma. Uh, I'm a multimedia artist and a writer, and I also work full time as a labor researcher. Um, I am always really interested in making work that reveals what is playful and irrelevant under the um, artificial and manufactured and corporate. So a lot of times I'll work with transparencies and laminations, uh, 3D models and renderings, green screens to explore this. Um, yeah, and I am really excited to be here today. I'm really grateful for the Center for Book Arts for this opportunity. Um, I think before the residency, I was making a lot of zines with my friends. Um, and then I feel like I came away with the residency a lot more equipped with the resources and the knowledge to make interesting things. Um, so here's just a 3D rendering of my face. Uh, I just wanted to show everyone how I'm feeling today, which is also how I feel in general. Um, Great. So I'm excited to share some new and old work today and thought I'd just start off by running up, running through various things I made during the residency. Um, so at the beginning of the residency, um, we all took a lot of introductory classes and bookbinding and typesetting. Um, and I was sort of becoming more familiar with the Vanderbilt Press. And in particular, I really liked this method that Ji Hyun taught me that she just presented about, that she learned from Ronnie um, about putting Wonder Foam on the press and inking it. And I just really loved the kind of textures and shapes um, that you would get from it. Um, so these are just a few prints that I made. Um, and I think these, and I think these techniques were all really useful. Um, when I made a broadside for the, the Center for Book Arts ongoing broadside series, um, collaborating with poets. So this is a poem by Monica Yoon. It's about Twinkies and a, it's about kind of the chemical alien nature of Twinkies and the, the Asian American experience. Um, so when she discusses this poem, she kind of talks about the cakey exterior of the Twinkie and like the, you know, the, she, she says the chemically caterpillar catalyzed stratum of their, their creamy interior. Um, and so, yeah, while making this broadsheet, I was kind of thinking of that alien manufactured nature of the Twinkie, that really distinctive, but also really mundane shape of the Twinkie and also just like chemical particles. Um, in retrospect, I, I almost wish I had made this like weirder, like, or, or to sort of like leaned into those ideas more. Um, but yeah, while making this broadsheet, um, don't tell anyone this, but I actually like slept on the couch in the Center for Book Arts to finish making these on time. Um, yeah, so that was that was really fun. Um, so one of the one of my I think my hands down favorite class I took during my time at the center was with Ben Denzer, his atypical bookbinding class, which I think he's still offering now. I don't I think Ben's on here. He can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but here's a book I made called Guest Book, uh, which is just a book of condoms. Um, it's definitely kind of a rip of Ben's own books. Um, which, you know, he makes these amazing books out of like various objects, but I thought it was just really fun and I really enjoyed the class. Um, and then in the class, I made another book uh, with these Chinese paper funeral objects. So in Chinese funerals, paper, uh, you know, fake paper money is typically burnt so that your loved ones can have money in the afterlife. Um, but you can also buy these paper objects like computers, smartphones, cigarettes. You know, this is some like kanji with some, maybe some chicken. Um, so I really, I just, I was just really interested in these objects because I love their, their sort of fake, ex I like, I love what they're like pretending to be. I feel like there's some there's some like metaphor or some like relationship I have to these objects and thinking about like cultural identity and this sort of like this sort of the, the like weird struggles with like authenticity authenticity and fakeness and like legibility that you often have so yeah I really enjoyed like hacking apart these objects and like putting them together back together in a book form um, and maybe that process of like making something that feels sort of disingenuous and legible into something more illegible <laughs> and sort of more nonsensical. Yeah, um, so thank you, Ben, for this, this really amazing class. Um, and then after this, the atypical binding class, I also started making books out of uh, transparencies and laminations. So here's one, uh, sorry for the image quality, I didn't have better shots on hand. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, as I sort of said before, I'm like attracted to, to these kinds of materials for, for sort of like that sort of artificial quality and maybe like, I don't know, like putting these like shitty 
laminations and like a nice book. Um, and yeah, and I got the chance to sell this book at the, uh, at the, what is it called? The Pioneer Works Press Play Fair in 2019 with my friend, um, which was really fun and exciting. And so at this point, I want to uh, show some work that I exhibited as part of CBA's exhibition for the residents. Um, as a kind of detail, I wasn't, I haven't been in New York City for the past few months and I, and I didn't have the opportunity to bring or finish or like install my work in person, but still wanted to be part of the exhibition. So instead I made and I presented a series of 3D model books called Bouncy Castle. Um, so I'll just show a few slides from that series and then I'll also play a video. And I think, um, I don't know, I guess I should say that I've been pretty like I don't know, like mentally ill this year and having, haven't made a ton of artwork. I don't know if there's anyone who can relate to that. So I think I, you know, was interested in, I, I don't know, I, I liked making this series of 3D modeled books because they're const often constructed in ways that are kind of like nonsensical and frivolous, like they have missing spines or hinges or they move in ways that feel a little bit dysfunctional. Um, their pages are kind of playful um, and sometimes just composed of entirely of negative space. And yeah, I think I think in just thinking about like, I don't know, I, I think I was thinking a lot about like that relationship between personal dysfunction and sort of, I don't know, like digital dysfunction. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna play a quick video here. Um, this is a, this book is called Meat Book. It contains um, a poem I wrote called Skin Suit. Um, this book is called uh, in Chinese Wu He Cheng Wei Zha Mi, or in English, How to Become a Scum Girl. Cool. Um, sorry. Uh, can you see this? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I think um, and I think just the final thing I wanted to present is that um, I think the books, the like digital books that I made for this exhibition um, are going to be part of a longer term project I have called Digital Girl with my friend and collaborator, Helen Lin. Um, so here's a website that she made, but um, I kind of see the books I made for this exhibition as part of a wider universe of objects in uh, for this project. So Digital Girl is an avatar and multimedia project. Um, it's, we're, we're sort of interested in exploring some of the themes I touched upon while presenting uh, the digital books. Um, I think we are really interested in themes of glitch and malfunction and error and you know interested in how glitch can refer to like a fault or irregularity in a system but also guides us into stories and emotions that often exist within um, business as usual and also you know uh, narratives of sort of forward progress um, so I think we, we you know we are really interested in translating between 
um, emotional and digital dysfunction to tell stories about shame and alienation. Um, and yeah, we are planning to make, are planning to think about how we can um, draw upon like cultural artifacts and digital, cu digital culture and render them into images and narratives um, that become part of this world. Um, yeah, if you wanna follow me on, I don't know, if you wanna follow me in on things, we can become friends, collaborate. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much. Um, thank you so much to the Center for Book Arts. Um, yeah, I'm just really grateful and excited for uh, to have had the opportunity to uh, be part of the Center. And I'm going to pass it on to Laura now. Hi, I'm Laura. Um, I'm going to share my screen right away uh, and uh, share some projects with you all. Um, I um, actually I wanted to share this one first to just cheer for everybody here and thank everyone um, um, at the Center for Book Arts, um, a place that I learned so much and um, have developed some really wonderful friendships and um, and some really great mentors. And my work uh, prior to coming to the Center for Book Arts was really rooted in public art and performance. And when I came, I, I was just learning about the connection between uh, the, the performance artists of the, the 60s and 70s and their, and their use of, of making books. And so I started to think about this and um, and thinking that I had never made a book before. Um, and this was one of the books that I made in, in Ben Denzer's um, class as well, the atypical book binding, which I think a lot of us found really fun and quick and inspirational. And, you know, and this idea that a book is an experience and a, just a moment of, for me, um, creating joy um, in just, you know, cheering <laughs> and, um, and so it was called Ra Ra. So, um, and a lot of class, I took a lot of classes uh, like this to try to figure out ways to make these um, performative experiences into, into books. But um, what I had, what I, where I had come from before was making some really um, community-based um, work. Uh, this is um, an, a, a website, uh, that documented a project that I had done on the Lower East Side called Moving Stories. Um, I actually can link to the, the website. You can all see that, right? Um, so this, um, I had moved to the Lower East Side in 2003 uh, after grad school and I moved um, here because it was my dream to become an artist in New York. And, and I moved to the neighborhood that my uh, grandparents had immigrated to about 75 years before me. And I walked around a lot and I tried to feel like I was connected, um, but I wasn't. Um, so I finally, um, you know, when I had um, uh, my son and uh, started to raise my family, I, um, I guess I, I wanted to establish roots in my community. And, um, and that's when I started to meet my neighbors. And, uh, you know, it's like the Sesame Street song says, who are the people in your neighborhood? It's the people you meet every day. So it turns out that I live in a naturally recurring, occurring retirement community where 20% of my neighbors are over the age of 65. And I began walking with my older neighbors uh, through, you know, secret tunnels of Knickerbocker Village. And there was a ritual mikvah and, um, uh, there was also this grocery store, the Pathmark, and it was um, demolished. And so I, these these journeys were were told. I was I was 
guided by these expert older neighbors and they would tell me these stories connected to um, all these um, people and places and um, really started to connect uh, to these street corners. And when you go to the website, um, you can, um, and this is what I had done right before I came to Center for Book Arts. So all of these are actually books. I guess they were books. They were like photographic um, uh, accordion folded uh, books that I made with my older neighbors. Um, and when you open them up, uh, let's see, like here's the, let's see. Um, isn't it grand? So this this is our street, the Grand Street. And so all these pictures were taken and the stories were written um, in collaboration with my neighbors. And as we would take these walks, um, we also um, photographed our walks. We called them like photo treks. And um, I guess you could see a little glimpse of one of my neighbors taking this photograph. And these, um, these were books, but I had put them into um, this digital format. This is the this is the mikvah actually um, that I spoke about, and uh, so you can um, take this journey to um, and take any of these walks. And the um, the ones with the arrows are are videos. So I had done um, site specific little short documentaries, uh, stories um, relevant uh, to those expert guides um, that showed me around this neighborhood. So the um, um, really, you know, helping bring together, um, making this generational um, gap, um, you know, t taking it apart and um, really connecting um, um, everyone, not just um, me, but, you know, grandchildren and, and uh, grandparents and community organizers developers um, and as they as the seniors were taking us all on these walking tours and this became part of the idea city festival um, that's put on by the new museum so after this i um i i did this project in 2018 also right before i had come to center for book arts and I collaborated with the choreographer uh, Naomi goldberg um to produce the Lower East Side Citizens Parade. And it's an activist processional and, and a series of performances. And the we, you know, collected stories from all the participants and uh, asked them questions like, what would you take with you um, if you um, had to, to move? Or um, what did you bring with you when you when you immigrated to the neighborhood? And th these stories, we kind of like put them together in, in art, in dance, in music, and we performed it as part of the uh, River to River Festival in June of 2018. So it was a real like celebratory visual journey along East Broadway um, and really honored all of my um, neighbors, the, the, especially the long-term residents um, who participated. Um, you can see um, in these photographs, um, I made a lot of boxes because they were part of this these big floats um, that we brought in the parade down the street. And they really play with uh, migration tropes. So we were transforming the residents into a moving company. Um, and they were carrying boxes with words um, they had shared with us that were important to them. Um, and uh, fragile priority history, uh, a language. Uh, this one um, we made special uh, for this dancer who was doing a, a, um, a traditional Jewish dance. And um, it says L'chaim, which means to live. And uh, we uh, went, this is the, these parade floats were made out of these boxes, which I've come to call story boxes. And they uh, come down this East Broadway and then into uh, Seward Park, which is the, the oldest municipal park in the United States and the living room of the Lower East Side. And these are some of the dances um, that followed as we commenced in the park. Oh, and so that brought me to the, um, the Center for Book Arts, and I, I really wanted to make a commemorative um, book from this experience, and so and I wanted to use a lot of the materials that we used in the um, 
in the parade. And so the idea uh, became this, you know, box and we wanted to like create a box that kind of was like a kit and it's like marked like similarly to the, the parade box with, you know, arrows and priority and, and but when you open it up, um, you get your your costume and all those photographs that I showed you. Um, it had these Velcro enclosures, and then this um, is a um, piece that pulls out so that you can pull the costume out and have this kit. And this was part of the uh, exhibition that is on view right now. And you can see uh, the addition, oops, sorry. The addition here uh, has, you know, I stack them up on these on, on the cart so that you could you can have your own like little mini float. Um, and uh, what was really cool, we had this table and we put the costumes inside, uh, and then had the um, the book laying on top for everyone to see with the the photographs. Um, but yeah, thanks very much to um, Ronnie and Jenna for um, helping me and inspiring this installation. Um, and then um the other project that is on display um here is called spiels on wheels and i had um also been the artist in residence in the department for aging and this is my one of my co-workers uh, she's a social worker and um and also happens to be a playwright and uh, her name's cheryl moak and we um created this project together as part of the um, Art and Odd Places Festival um, in 2019, where we dressed up kind of like Meals on Wheels. Uh, I had been delivering Meals on Wheels as part of my volunteer work and working at the Department for Aging. And I was really inspired by all these um, people who were isolated at home. Um, this was before we were all isolated at home, but there have always been people isolated at home and um, unable to leave their homes and they're delivered meals uh, through organizations like Meals on Wheels. And there are a lot of stories and things. Um, and we decided to like write a play, um, which we created into a radio drama. Um, I have a little clip I can share with you. Uh, let me... Actually, I'm not going to share it with you because I didn't share my audio today. So, um, any case, so what we did was we, uh, and I was really, I made this while I was in residence at the uh, Center for Book Arts. And I had taken a lot of um, actually private lessons with Barbara and um, had worked a lot with Ronnie as well to like really figure out how to make and package the, these um, deliverables. And what you're seeing here is actually what are look like meals on wheels but i had photographed actual meals of uh, and there was pasta and this is actually steak um and this is a vegetarian burger so we um then created them into postcards and i figured out how to um, get them die cut so that they could fit inside the box uh and then on the back of the um the postcard, um, it left rooms and uh, questions and room for people to write notes and to mail um, to me at the Department of Aging so I could share with um, some isolated New Yorkers. And then the QR code is to that audio, um, that radio um, play. And this is just another picture of us handing out the boxes on the street, uh, on 14th Street. And um, the, you know, the, that the ideas that I had come to the Center for Book Arts really culminated in both of these projects as I learned how to make um, what I had always been making boxes, story boxes um, from that those early days of um, making the, the floats for the Lower East Side Citizens Parade. And then I just just kept making boxes and um, and I'm still making them. So I really am grateful for everything that I've learned there and I um, I keep taking classes, um, even online. Um, and recently, uh, Jahoon, I took um, the, there was a pop-up book class, um, which was really fun and um, really exciting to make um, these sort of stories like come alive. And, um, and I'm very uh, grateful and thank, and I thank everyone um, for the time. And I, I hope that I get to stay at the Center of Book Arts for, for a long time. 
so that, that is that is it thank you and kevin is um the next artist so um so i um Kevin Wania, and I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay, I, hopefully, I hope that that shares. Um, so, uh, I in college, I I dabbled in like some printmaking courses, but didn't really. You know, just got a couple of semesters, didn't really dive into the whole history and background and different techniques that was like you, you could accomplish. So, um, and I've always, I, I applied to the Center for Book Arts because I've like always been an avid, like lover of books and, and a lot of my favorite artists from the 60s they they made books so i was like oh wow like i want to like make books and like uh i figured that like making a book would be the pretty much like a walking portfolio to to give out to people or like people to to purchase your you know your work without having to spend thousands of dollars and and, and so um i think maybe a couple of months before i got accepted to the residency i actually purchased this solo web book and and um, I, I just keep always thinking about it and so um i my work i'm mostly a painter so like i'm more accustomed to 2d uh point of view and and this this is a book from by um bruno minari um and i think it's a children's book i'm not really sure but when coming into the residency um what well, first of all i want to thank you center for book arts for uh giving me the opportunity to be in the residency uh i really had a lot of fun and i really uh, enjoyed the community aspect of the residency and everyone i met there were amazing and very helpful and and yeah and so uh one of my favorite courses were the letterpress um, courses just because I'm very fascinated on this aspect of, of printing and and it was, it was great that uh, the Vander Cook was mostly the, the equipment to use at the Center for Book Arts and so um, I've done some screen, screen printing but never letterpress, and I wasn't really sure what was, what were you capable of, of doing on the letterpress. But uh, the the great thing about the residency is I learned that you can print with Wonderfoam, and 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 never I've never heard of polymer plates, and so that was amazing to learn it, and now I can like, you know, do it and in my home studio, which is great because it doesn't really require that much equipment. Um, but this is one of the letter presses that I made. Uh, I think this was uh, 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 the reductive format where I start off with the the bright, uh, the darker red and then no, the bright red. And then I work into it. I keep on cutting on the wood block and then the darker red was the reductive form of it. And this is one of the broad sides that I was able to collaborate with Brian Tier, which was crazy because we lived in the same city at the same time uh, in San Francisco. And I'm surprised I never came across him because his his poems were like utterly amazing and, and so expressive. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity to work with him. Um, and I think a, a good number of my favorite courses were the book binding and like Coptic, Coptic stitch, stitching. Um, and I can't really remember the instructor. I feel like it's been ages. I think it was Sarah. Um, but I really enjoyed the sort of hands-on approach to 
um, those courses because um, I'm I'm so fascinated with work woodworking and I really enjoyed all the like hammering and the gluing and the uh, the cutting we had to do just to build the the hard covers and I mean I still use my my notebook and I keep making new ones after they run out um, and now they're like I go to bookstores or like some of my books are falling apart here. I like, I love that I can analyze it and know how to fix the problem just because you kind of know the, the, the body of the layout. And, and so that was really cool to just know how to like, not uh, conserve it pro professionally, but you know, to get by. Uh, and then, so this is my book, uh, Midnight um, Voyage, that I, I did for the the final show. Um, and this is consisting a lot of uh, photographs that I took in the past um, since 2016. And and I've never I I love working for with photography, but never really kind of showed it or exhibited or or even like you know, told people that I shot photography and and a lot of my work, my my paintings are heavily influenced by architecture and urban design. And so um, a concept with this book, uh, well, uh, I got inspired by this image that I saw in the library at the Center for Book Arts. And I think that was like absolutely my favorite uh, thing because I was literally at the library like researching Maybe I went through like I don't know, over a hundred books, and each book was like dumbfounding because like I've never heard of some of these artists, um, and they're like amazing and amazing, and and so I, I definitely got a lot of inspiration from that. Um, but this is the got inspired by this one, so um, I actually made a bigger version of that. The, the first one, but I realized that costly effective was not, it was not costly effective. And so I kind of um, minimized it. And, um, and uh, I was lucky enough to buy a fine art printer and print these books myself. Um, that was the I had them stapled and bind, uh, but in the end, I wanted stitching. And, and with COVID and everything, I kind of had to like put things on pause. And like, I left New York last March, um, and so I've been here in Kansas City since then. And so like, uh, I had to put I had to put like my life on pause and, and kind of like well everyone knows like you know trying to survive this pandemic but um yeah and also like i'd never with photography i love shooting like architecture and nature and and this is like the first time i actually like included human beings <laughs> or people just because i'm like uh an abstract painter and there's something about like me um so I mean, like I don't really like to include people in my work, uh, but this, uh, you know, certain capturing certain moments helped me like analyze like my time and memory, and like it it, it kind of helps me like remember all these moments. And so like I had to include these people just because I know exactly where that girl was in Madrid, and um, and I think the basis of the the my final book was to show that like. A lot of my inspiration of my paintings and my work actually comes from like real life uh, observations. Uh, a lot of people say uh, that like abstract abstract artists just kind of like create this sort of world inside their head. Yes, that's true. But like a lot of times they're inspired by like their surroundings and, and communities. And like, um, I think uh, for a lot of, uh, people who who uh, enjoy my work, I think I wanted to make the book to show that like, oh, this the uh, this painting is referencing this you know swing set or like 
this painting, this uh, a lot of the photographs I took were of like uh, mundane things, maybe derelict uh, walls, and um, and uh, during the the residency, I like was transitioning to jobs, so I couldn't really take that many courses. Um, but um, in a lot of the courses, I, I like worked Saturdays and Sundays and. Like, a lot of the best ones that I really wanted to take, like the marbling class, I couldn't take. Um, but I also, you know, did continue with making books and um, making books that were uh, not always considered traditional, like a, a, a Coptic book. But uh, the, like, the idea of coming into the residency, I wanted to make uh, a book that was considered also like industrial design, so like a lamp. Um, but this is very inspired by Japanese choji's uh, screens. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think the the great thing I took from Center for Book Arts is his ability to make a book, construct a book, and you know, you don't have to like make five thousand copies of the book. We, uh, and so like what I really enjoyed was able to make scenes and and, and like distribute them and um, and you know the the everyone was super smart at the Center for Book Arts and like had a, a way of doing their own things and so it was really good to observe and um, yeah I'm pretty grateful for the experience and, and so now we'll transition into uh, Q&A. So I'm going to bring all the residents to the Zoom stage. Um, and I wanted to open up the chat and also invite people to unmute themselves if they want to ask questions for um, any specific artist or the group as a whole. So yeah, thank you guys so much for those presentations. Um, uh, as we're getting questions from the audience, I was wondering if anyone has any questions for each other or for the group? Um. Anything? <laughs> I'm 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 interested, Kathleen. I'm interested um, to hear more about like this digital space mm -hmm. that you're creating. Mm -hmm. I like this transition, like in terms of the book going from you know this physical to digital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think that um, wait. So the question. Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> I just wanted you to expand a little bit more on your digital work that you're doing, like, yeah. you know, and, and how maybe how like just working with books is informing that. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, so the the project that my 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 collaborator and I Helen have been working on we we've been working for like a while now, and I think we we were really interested in creating an avatar um, who, who like is navigating the world both as a girl and also as a young girl and also as I think kind of a sort of a like an, a, like an alien avatar and I think we were sort of interested in using this avatar to work through some of our own feelings around um, like I don't know like anything like dysfunction I'm thinking about like perception authenticity and and sort of ugly feelings um, and and so I think 
be, it's, we, we sort of plan for it to be a multimedia project where we'll make like videos and GIFs and animations, and hopefully also like games and comics and zines to sort of populate this world mm -hmm. um, and sort of have 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 made um, a series of things already for the project. So my collaborator Helen has made like a dress up game with a fish where you dress up a fish and that's like this avatar's pet. And I've started making some of the, like the objects that this avatar has, including I think some of these books. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's just a really like full, I don't know, like a really, a project with a lot of tentacles that I think we're excited to explore. Yeah, sounds great. Um, Delphine, uh, we got a question from Karina in the chat. Um, you had a bit of book practice before CBA, but a completely different kind as a publisher and editor. Mm -hmm. How do you think that shaped the direction of your residency? Um, I think that it made me, just because I understood like what it meant to, you know, publish a book that is a traditional book, it kind of made me has not hesitant but always you know a little nervous and vulnerable around making books with my hands you know always like okay is this the right way or you know and, and also too thinking about the structure of um of making the books like I remember when I did this I have one here when I did the hardcover book for the do you remember Laura we were so excited like oh my goodness you could actually do this with your hands. So I think working to make these constructed objects that you could, you thought just like machines <laughs> did it, right? It kind of just gives you a whole new appreciation for the construction of the book. So in that regard, that's one thing, but then also um, thinking about experimenting outside of the box of the traditional book. I think that that, it just pushed me even further in that direction. Like how can I challenge you know, the, the normal book structure and do something else, you know? So, yeah. And then also even thinking in terms of, I, I have so many one-offs that I don't even want to make <laughs> any more of them. I want it to be one, you know, or three, you know, it's really interesting to have uh, just three books in the world of one thing. And then therefore you start to look at it as, you know, this another, another art object that is in a limited view or whatever, but yeah, it's just definitely an interesting transition. Great, thank you. Um, so we have another question in the chat and this is for everyone. Um, how do you see exhibiting book forms will change with the pandemic and the removal of touch and your take on the intimacy of books? Mm -hmm. I'll say that the two books that I exhibited were exact, like right, the first one was right at the transition of the, um, we went right into the pandemic and then no one could touch it. Like I exhibited for, that was the whole point that people could be able to turn the pages and they couldn't do it with either one. The other one is in the glass. And so it's so weird now because you want people to be able to, um, come and touch the book and I think one one aspect of my work is always this thing where I'll have works on a wall that people want to touch but they're not allowed to but now here I'm making a book that you can touch and then there's all these limitations about yeah, but you know you, you um uh, made the hollow and then you mailed it to everyone so I that's mean, true I that's another thing yeah that was great yeah the idea yeah you can mail you know, and deliver your books. Um, Thanks for re reminding me of that. That's so true. This is so, so beautiful. Much. Yeah, the idea of of making hala, as you're saying, like I literally would just, like ten books every week, <laughs> and then mailing them out in this very slow process. But it was also a slow and healing process, and knowing that this particular book is going to end up in this person's hand, and then they're going to experience it however but it was a real personal gift that now they can touch and do all of you know do as they wish with it but yeah that's a special part the idea of being able to make something with your hands and then give it to someone but here's mine oh nice yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that's the cool part but then when it's on public view you know it's that limited amount of 
touch and all of that stuff. And you get your personal stuff at the bottom too. Yeah, <laughs> a gift. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Did anyone else want to answer that question? Um, yeah, I can. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm. So I feel like you know I obviously exhibited some work that that was not that you know was digital and that you couldn't touch and um, like I, I am really interested in that constraint and like in what kind of work can be produced within that constraint. Cause I, I feel like I personally, I don't know if I'm like interested in creating like a one-to-one -one experience. Like I wouldn't be, or, or like, I wouldn't be interested in trying to like make like a VR experience of like reading the book. Like, I think that sounds terrible. Um, but, but yeah, I guess I am interested in like, um, I, I would be interested to see, I guess, like more attempts at like addressing that constraint and like what, what sort of generative stuff could come out of that. Because uh, I had thought while making my books that I could also green screen a pair of hands sort of paging through one of these digital books. And I think I was just attracted to how like goofy and, and um, sort of off kilter that would feel. Um, but I think it was more about that kind of goofiness or like reaching at that or, or, or trying to create some semblance of like of that um, experience or that order rather than trying to create like a, you know, like flip through this digital book which which I, I feel like more whatever about I think I'm I'm pretty excited on uh, after the pandemic and the innovative ways people are, will think of exhibiting books or, or even exhibiting art in itself because I think it's going to take a while for people to feel comfortable um, being in the crowd or, or even touching things. Um, and so I, I, I guess, um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, it's gonna change, but it, it, it probably changed for the best. Uh, uh, just, you know, times you know, always are changing and um, I mean, since the pandemic, I've been buying a lot of uh, uh, art books, and 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 so I, you know, I'm still buying them, but I'm not really. I mean, I haven't gone to our ex exhibition in like a year or so. So, um, yeah, I think it's exciting to see how people are gonna or deal with the the evolution of the pandemic. And, the direction of things. That's an interesting point, Kevin, because I feel like over this pandemic, I've bought the most art books that I've bought in my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like every week I'm ordering a new one, which is really interesting. And I mean, it's it's a great way to pass the time. Uh -huh. um, just because like, like, I've gotten used to like trying to teach myself something new during the pandemic so I can like keep sane in the studio and, and uh -huh. um, so, yeah. So, do we have any other questions from the audience or from the residents? May I ask a question? Of, uh, sure. A, a nerdy tech question. Uh, and first, I want to say you're your presentations were wonderful and super inspiring. And so thanks, thanks for letting us uh, be lawyers. Uh, do you, any of you know how to trigger sound uh, within a turning page? You know, like you mentioned pop-ups, but I was like, ooh, what's the mechanic for having a, a sound play? Or is that something that anyone encountered in their experiments. I, I didn't do that this year uh, as part of my residency, but the, um, I have um, put sensors in paper. So like, you know, like those greeting cards that you, you know, can get at the, you know, that when you open them up, they play a song. There's like a, a little sound chip. Um, I've used that 
as you said before. Cool. Yeah. And and then and then other times you can also include like QR codes that old link to to something musical or, or uh, uh, I'm more inter I, I from your question what came to my head was like you know having magnet on a page and then that would that would make a sound and make that zing or mm -hmm. uh, but that I I kind of went outside and but. Yeah, those sensors are really cool to, because I think you can, there's websites where you can pre-record things into those uh, uh, greeting card sensors. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know. Oh, in that book class, uh, Ben's book class of the, um, oh, what is it called again? Anyway, the alternative books that we made in ben De Benzer's class. I wonder if there was a, a, anyone who had like, just mechanical when they opened their book it made sound um, it seems like that would be a class you would make that like analog not with a piece of tech but because you really can make any you can make a book out of anything that looks like a page that's what we learned um a block a text block that's what we learned so i assume you can make a sound um by finding definitely that make sound by by, by just turning the page. There wasn't any, sorry, I just, there wasn't anyone in the class who, who played with those particular things, but I agree with what all you were saying that like greeting cards are a good place to look to see how they work and that could be applied. If you had a book like made out of like wood pages or something, it would definitely make a sound every time they yeah. hit each other. Yeah. Or like a xylophone, the page where it's like, each each uh mm -hmm. each book has like I don't know, a tone inside and every time it flips you can we, do, we all like learn how to make accordion books so like you yeah know, turn that into a sound <laughs> um if you look at the books of Susan Share um she has made a lot of books that are wearable and you move while you're wearing them and then they make sound mm -hmm. um, that's one example of it but like, there have been other people that embedded um chips you know sound chips in their books in the past i'm sure if you do a search on it you'll find it how do you spell share s c a no s h a r e susan joy share she's in alaska mm -hmm. We're trying to get Susan to teach a performative books class, which would be really fun. I think you guys would like it. Especially you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I'm interested. I don't know if you mentioned this, um, because remember, as a part of your book, the books, you did the lunch um, trays, and then you could write to the residents the elderly resident, yes. was there a response? Like, I'm so curious as to how they received that. You've been doing so much work about that kind of, you know, action and. Yeah, no, I mean, I distributed hundreds of those boxes on the street um, for the, the weekend. It was, the festival was like four or five days. So, uh, and yeah, we, we got, you know, I would say like hundred or so um, postcards returned to us um, at the Department for Aging. And it uh -huh. was like part, I mean, I'm not the, the first, uh, you know, there's uh, other organizations that actually do this. Uh, there's mm -hmm. the, Rote, the Rote Foundation has a program where they invite people to write to, to the elderly um, and then they collect the postcards and then they redistribute them to um, the elderly. Uh, it's like a program, but I, I wanted to like have conversations on the street that's what i'm yeah that's what i'm wondering like on the on the part of the people who received the postcards like how they responded that's what i'm interested i'm not sure of you yeah no i those uh the people i and i did i didn't show all these photos there was a lot of photographs of all the people that i talked to and um but yeah i, I mean when i 
I did read like some of the responses. People like just told us about their mundane lives and yeah, their grandchildren or what whatever um, came to mind. It wasn't it wasn't anything. Um, I, 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 there wasn't any like let's say fictional storytelling or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a last call for questions. If anyone else wants to unmute themselves to ask, now is the time. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for um, being such wonderful residents and rolling with um, the pandemic at the, uh, you know, kind of like right at the end of the residency. And um, it's been so wonderful to get to know all of you. Uh, and some of you I got to see in the studios all the time. And some of you came in in the middle of the night. And <laughs> um, but I hope that you all as residents will be um, coming back to CBA, you know, when things open up or as you feel comfortable. Um, we really want to see you in the studios. And um, I, if you guys ever have questions about new books that you're working on or weird ideas, like, or if you make a book and you want me to look at it, bring it by. Um, I'd love to see you guys and to, um, you know, hear about the projects that you're working on. And as you continue to exhibit your work, um, please send us information about it because um, we wanna share it with our community. So um, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great, okay, if people wanna unmute themselves and turn their cameras on to give the residents a round of applause. <laughs> <Think so. laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <you> everybody. <laughs> Thank you again to our residents. Thanks to everyone who joined us this evening. Please visit the exhibition. It's uh, running through March um, and uh, we're open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 4. Uh, we also have our main gallery exhibition um, as well. Um, and stay connected. Everyone stay connected. Oh, do. Go to centerforbookarts.org for more details. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.